All right, so today we're going to take the uh, wheels off the machine. I tried to empty the fuel tank. I took a, a measurement of the uh, resistance across here, and it was 86 ohms. The uh, empty level is uh, 80 ohms plus or minus 10. So I know that the tank is essentially empty, so the fuel gauge could be reading correctly. But unfortunately, they've used a uh, hex key plug on the bottom of the tank that is not removable. I think it is uh, 15 millimeter, but I'm not certain. So what I did was I took a uh, 5 8 bar stock and uh, just uh, ground it down to 15 because my uh, hex key set went from 14 to 17. I don't have 15 and then 5 8 is 16. So between these pieces here, that's uh, more or less a full metric set, but uh, didn't work unfortunately. So uh, to empty these tires, these are split rims like an uh, old Volkswagen might be. They have two bolt circles in them. So if you read the manual, they tell you to take the air out of the tires. Because uh, if you were to take this rim apart under pressure, it would kill you. It, uh, that's just the way it is. It happened to a lot of people who own Volkswagens. So just don't take these off with air in them. So I just have a, a tool for reaching in taking out the valve core. Depending on how humid it is where you are, the valve core might freeze up. It's about 100 PSI, so it will come out pretty quick. So you are your glass. front wheel. There we go, frame. Do the other two, then we'll start uh, taking these apart. We have to take the uh, center part out because I want to get to the brakes and do an inventory of all parts I need. So uh, I'll get closer to doing that with the camera again. All right, so these are uh, 21 millimeter bolts here. If you don't have an impact, you don't need a bother. And you'll need to have a three quarter inch uh, torque wrench to put these on again. Back to that one. Oh, it broke my adapter. It's been a, a long time coming. I always have a spare. We'll go get the next uh, adapter set up and we'll keep going. All right, so these uh, are adapters here. This one is a cheap one from ProPoint. This is a uh, Williams, which is like the industrial version of a uh, Snap-on. It's, uh, it's actually outlived one motor from this uh, thing here. I had to replace the motor last year. So it lasted a, a long time. But, and it's got like a deeper convex here. 
So this one here, it's not deep enough to go in all the way to put the retainer through, which is kind of annoying. So uh, anyway, I guess you won't have a retainer. And I'm thinking we might break this uh, replacement today because it's pretty cheap. But uh, hopefully we can get some work done. Uh, I forgot that this impact gun had a hog ring on it. It's a bit of a pain to change the socket. I should be using three quarter inch drive sockets, realistically. All right, we got that. So it broke uh, where this pin goes here. This one doesn't use a, uh, a retainer on the half inch drive side. All right, we got it. So you can see how this wheel is bolted together. There's no brakes on here. There's grease points. There, the tie rod end is not greasable, but the kingpins are. And this is a, a packable wheel bearing. There's that center link. And there in the center pivot. At some point I gotta look at those and see how good a condition they are, whether I trust them or not. You can see that there's a, a ram for power steering assist under there. I'm not sure if it's focusing or not. Not on the right thing, it's over there further. But, all right, I guess we'll go and get set up on the front wheel, see how that goes. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we break something. Here. No, pretty good. Fine thread. All right. You see how rusted on. So like I said, I want to take the brake drum off and inspect the brakes. I know i got a parking brake problem, so I'll have to take the uh, axle shafts out. To do that, so I'll have to catch the oil. So it's better just to take the wheel off rather than to try and take it off as a big assembly. It's the inside of the wheel. So there's absolutely nothing stopping you from uh, disassembling, disassembling the wrong half of the wheel first then killing yourself, so just take the air out of the tires. So get the next two off and we'll go a bit deeper. All right, back to the rear wheel here. So I took uh, just the wire brush and cleaned off as best I could for the time being. I used the hammer and the screwdriver, went around this a few times and uh, loosened this. Eventually we'll get this out of here. Just want to check the condition of the bearings. They make cap pullers, but I do not have one. It's in there pretty tight, I gotta say. I guess it doesn't have suspension, so it rides pretty rough. So I put it in tight. Pretty deep 
in there. Good grief. You need a big screwdriver. I don't think I've ever seen a pair dust cover this deep before. It's kind of funny. All right. Looks like there's plenty of grease in here. So let's have to get some cardboard or something out here. And I'll have to measure the size of this. Let's see if I need to buy a socket for it or not. So I'll get that cleaned up and we'll find out what size it is. Alright, getting this cotter pin out is not being too easy. It was double folded in towards the uh, bearing because the dust cap doesn't have much space in it. So I forced this drift through it as far as I could. Good news is that this uh, nut is uh, finger tight. It was anyway. Probably uh, roughed up the threads a bit there by doing this. This is not the tool I would be using to tighten this up. Do the job to get it apart. Like I said, I'll need to get a couple of large sockets to finish this job. Struggle to the last thread. Goodness. Oh, that has to be. Alright, got that. Need a place to put the hub. So with the uh, back will have a grease seal, but the front doesn't. So pull it out. Put it down like this so that nothing falls out. And I'll have to clean the uh, sealing surface and then go through the bearings to see if they're damaged or not. Hopefully not. And then uh, clean up this nut here and see what size it is. Just got a measuring tool here. Just zero this out on millimeters. So it's uh, 46 millimeters or 1.8 inches. You'd have to check, figure out what that is in fractions. Unless you have a tool. And this one, so what the heck? 71 millimeter? Is that right? No, that's like three inches. Good to have a reference between metric and imperial. So it's two inches. So if you have a two inch uh, socket, that would be okay, more than likely. So I'll get that cleaned up off camera. We'll move on to the uh, front. All right, so it's time to take the uh, front hub off here. So you can see the uh, emergency brake cable comes in right here. So I noticed on the uh, what would be the passenger side per se, like the right hand side of the truck, that cable is missing and there's an open hole. So that sort of helps me understand what's going on with the parking brake situation. So these uh, are 17 millimeter. We're starting to get into normal car sized parts now. I'm glad that they use uh, bolts for this. When they use nuts, it's a real problem. You can use them when you're 
and the uh, studs usually pull out. I'm starting to smell gear oil now. It's not very. So I've got a drip pan set up here. And it's got a two pound hammer. Try to get this axle out. Oh, it's water. That's great. That's not good for the bearings, is it? All right, I guess we're buying bearings for this. It's not a very long axle. Great. I'll have to figure out what kind of a retaining system that is. It looks like there's a giant star washer there with uh, some tabs folded over. So I'll have to take a look at that. Then we'll uh, get this hub apart. I'm kind of disappointed right now, but that's life. Hopefully the uh, differential is in good shape. All right, so there ended up being oil in the other bearing. The bearings will be a low point in the system on each end. I don't know if you can see it in there or not, but the oil level just kind of covers the bottom of the uh, inside bearings for the differential. So I'm thinking if any luck, the water will just be in the bottom of the pumpkin because water sinks to the bottom, right? It's uh, heavier than oil. Oil sheen always goes onto the top. And then there's just a plastic uh, seal at the top of the uh, diff there. I don't know if you can see it or not. So that would be the culprit as to why there's water in this thing. It's my understanding it was outside for the most part. So I'm not sure how long this was going on. Well, they probably use it in the rain. So there's a, uh, a drain plug at the bottom of the pumpkin the wheels off you can just reach it and just barely get a uh, drain pan in there so I'm gonna get that off of there and we'll take a look take a look at what comes out and the uh, hex key as well well sadly there's quite a bit of water coming out of there I don't know if you can see or not there's a couple liters of water came out it's nasty looking stuff we'll have to flush this thing out a couple times Hope there's no damage because they're not taking the differential out of this machine. That would just be way too much work for me to do, I think. At this point, anyway, I don't need the machine badly enough. So we'll let that drain and I'll keep working on getting the hubs off. All right, it was a 10 millimeter to take the uh, drain plug out. All right, so I uh, knocked over the uh, lock ring here. It was just uh, holding a tab on this, just to use a chisel to, to get this started. Now further in, I gotta figure out, it looks like it's the same kind of deal in here. It's another one with uh, four locking pins. Let's see if I can get this thing pointed in the right direction and we'll uh, knock this thing loose. Probably not the preferred way of doing it, but uh, it's the tools I got to do the job today. Off. This is the uh, drain or the uh, stopper plug for the top of the uh, differential. It's got a little air hole in it and it probably allows it to draw in water. I haven't backed off the parking brake, 
So I'm not sure how well this is going to come off. Seems pretty good. So I'm just going to put this on top of the uh, drain pan so you can dump it out. There's a big stuff in the barrel. So it has like a big uh, ceiling surface here. Brakes look to be in decent condition. Some leakage evidence here. So it needs new seals and bearings. On the uh, wheel hubs, I'll have to get the other side off and do the same thing. And then uh, I know what I need there. I'll have to get these bearings out get the numbers off of them or just order uh, forklift parts without digging up the numbers like just using the OEM numbers rather than the bearing manufacturer numbers I gotta look at the brakes and see if they're leaking or not I think that I, since I've got this apart I should probably just change the seals and the wheel cylinders these aren't really known to be very good it's a pretty standard part it needs to be replaced you see where the bar parking brake cable comes in and grabs this part here. So I'll get the other side off when I get a, a drain pan available. You need one drain pan for the hubs, another drain pan for the diff. So i got to move things around a bit. Alright, so I've taken a bit of time to think about the situation. The uh, bearing surfaces are okay in the uh, hubs. And uh, I'll turn the light on here so you can see this bearing surface. So it's got some funny wear on it, but it's not pitted or damaged by any water or corrosion or anything. So I'm just going to put this back together tonight and let it drain. And then tomorrow I'm going to overfill it with 80 weight oil and just flush the heck out of this and get everything out. Because I think I've caught it before any damage has happened. So this is where we're going to shut her down for today. All right, so it's uh, a couple of days later. I'm gonna take a break from the uh, bearings for a minute. I've got a free time jack pushing on this uh, hex key, I'm trying to get this uh, drain plug out of the fuel tank. Well, if that doesn't do it, I don't think anything will. Alright, so it's just been uh, almost 48 hours since I last worked on the machine. It was a bit of a scramble that evening, so what I did was I flushed it out with about 5 liters of gasoline and uh, immediately drained it into this pan. And then uh, I filled it up again with about the same amount of diesel. And so it's been kind of sitting that way since then. So we're going to, you can take a look at the condition of the pan right now. I'm going to reach in there and uh, pull the drain, which will be very hard for you to see anything. And then uh, take a look in the pan again and see where we're at as far as uh, the flushing process goes. I have bought new oil, but I'm prepared to flush this uh, a couple times before I put it in. I probably won't be doing any work inside the differential like I mentioned before. If I had to work on it, I'd have to take the engine out, then the transmission out, and the transmission has like a third member of the differential attached to it. So it's a, it's a fair amount of work to do that. Because then you have to break open the hydraulics because that's run off a of PTO on the front of the motor. at the right height. Hopefully get this started. Let me take it out by hand.
Feels like we're going the wrong way. So this is a uh, diesel that's coming this time. Make sure this is ready to go. I want the overflow. See it coming down there. Let's go. Pretty reasonable. Can't keep up with that much fluid. It's so thin. Get the plug out of here. There's no magnet on the plug. So you can't really pick anything up on it. It's hard to be clean working on a forklift. Nice job. Alright, so it looks like we have more flushing to do. There's quite a stain on here. I think I'm going to pour some diesel straight through and then uh, fill it up and then dump it out again. Alright, so I emptied the drain pan into this pail. I'm going to use this for like the bulk cleaning of these uh, hubs. So I'm going to take the bearings out and keep them separate for cleaning. But you can see I just used a screwdriver to start removing the seal. So I put the seal like that and hit on with uh, the hammer a couple times. Then I was able to get a get it started so I can pop it out. So let's see if we can uh, get that out of there or not. I'm just gonna put this stuff on the floor. Try to get this here. It'd be hard to show it to you. Not getting all of it yet. So anyway, you just have to kind of pick away at it. It's pretty big for like a regular seal puller. If you didn't want to try to save the bearings, you just use a drift on the inside and hammer out the bearing like that. Uh, you could do that even if you're going to save the bearings, but it's been a, lo a long time since I've done that. So I'm kind of out of uh, skill for that. So I'm just going to go the hard way just to save things so that it came out pretty reasonably. Let's see the uh, bearing. So I'm just going to put this up there. To scoop out as much grease as I can then I'm going to throw this in solvent and get it cleaned off. Alright so we're wrapping up the second part of me working on the uh, spindles here. So I got things cleaned up just using the Varsol. They're not the final clean. But what I found was that this spindle here had a fair amount of water in it at some point and the, uh, the inner bearing is uh, damaged. So I have to replace that. And uh, it's kind of interesting that these the washers that go underneath of the uh, spindle nuts have a lot of wear on them. I don't know if it's because of the way the machine turns where it turns the back wheels almost sideways it does that. But it was uh, that way and similar on both sides. So I'll have to look at getting some uh, new washers or turning them backwards perhaps. I'm not exactly sure what to do there. Seems like there's a lot of force involved in uh, the way this machine works. I tried to get as much uh, rust build up off of the spindles as I could just using a wire brush. 
This uh, spindle here, you can see that uh, the casting comes into where the uh, bearings are. So I have to take a look at that and see if I need to grind any of that off or not, or if it's going to be okay. And uh, no real weird wear on it, but you replace the uh, inner and outer cones at the same time. That one there obviously has uh, the rust issues. Didn't get any part number off the of seals, they were pretty bad shape. The bearings here. That one's kind of hard to read. Uh, it's more visible on the other one. This is a Natchi E30206J. And this one. This E30211J. Without getting the uh, cones out or the uh, outer races, it's kind of hard to know what the matching sets are. Um, other than that, it was a 46 millimeter to remove these uh, nuts here. So my veneer calipers are obviously way out to lunch. So anyway, 46 millimeter for that. I use three quarters drive. The uh, spindle, the wiper section on this side is in reasonably good condition. On the other side, it's pretty rusty. I'll have to see if I can sleeve it or just uh, clean it off by hand. It's kind of dark, but anyway. It's dark because it's in rough shape. If it was polished like it should be, it wouldn't look like that. So there's that. I'll have to look at the workings of this rear suspension. At some point, there's quite a few grease points on it. And the uh, power steering cylinder is easy to access with this wheel off. So I'll have to keep that in mind because it needs to be rebuilt. Ah, looking at things. Yeah, to take that transmission out is a real nightmare because you got to take out the uh, steering system, the brake system, with the inching valve and like so much. It's a, it's a lot of work. So we're going to keep working at flushing this uh, differential. When you take out the funnel, you can actually see in there and see that uh, the ring gear has got some rust on it. So I'm going to keep flushing that. Not, it's not going to remove any rust that's attached to it. But I noticed that uh, in the catch pan I was still getting rust coming out after running. I don't know if it was uh, 15 or 20 liters of diesel through this so far. So I'm going to keep flushing it. I wish there was an easier way to drain this, but if you were to put a like a hose on the bottom of that differential and come out sideways, it would be hard to uh, protect it. It would probably get broken off and you lose all your oil and make a big mess. So I'm going to keep on doing that. That eventually will get the uh, hubs uh, apart here again and start cleaning those. So I guess I'm going to shut this down for tonight and I'm going to carry on. This is going to be a, a week or two to get this all figured out because I have to order parts before I get this finished. So anyway, we'll keep uh, filming and picking away at this. Alright, so I guess I'll give an update. I've been working on this uh, machine for, I don't know, I probably put five or six hours into trying to clean up this differential, clean the bearings and spindles and whatnot. Things are going pretty good. I decided I'm going to keep the bearings and just replace the seals. So I was able to get the uh, seals out without damaging them. So the trick there is when you're driving out the uh, inner bearing, you want to press on here and not the cage. So you can, uh, you're going from the inside, so you'll be going from here. Just tap on that gently and eventually you'll uh, push out the bearing. The condition of the bearing is uh, it's okay, I guess. I don't know, I have to think about this in the life of a forklift. It's not like they drive very far. So uh, perhaps it doesn't need to be as good as a car that drives for days on end. So that's sort of where we're at. It's been really gross cleaning this out. So I've just been using uh, what they call an engine cleaner. It's a siphon wand with compressed air and uh, diesel. And I found that just filling this up with diesel and draining isn't 
doing very much. But when I use this wand, it really stirs things up and I'm getting a lot of slurry out of the bottom of the dip, which is kind of unfortunate, but at least it's coming out. So I'll do a, a quick video on how to do that. It's a really messy job, that's why I got two fans going. You get diesel all over everything, it's pretty nasty. Something better done outside, but this thing is not moving anywhere right now. All right, so I don't know, don't know what happened to the camera there, but it seemed to have shut down while I was working. So I've got the uh, diff as clean as I'm gonna be able to get it. So at this point, I'm gonna focus on fixing the parking brake on the far side. The uh, wheel cylinders are working and not leaking. I'm able to check that. The main problem I had was that the uh, wheel seals leak. And then it turns out that the uh, wheel bearings are compartmentalized from the uh, differential. So they shouldn't be seeing the oil in the diff. There's some seals on those uh, bearings. I showed it earlier. So I'll have to get those uh, replaced. They're not too big of a deal to change, I don't think. So I'll get a parts order there. So I think that this is gonna be the end of like the first part of working on the wheel bearings. So I'll get this uh, part of the video out. And then uh, when I put it together, I will uh, piece together another video because I think that this is getting fairly long. So uh, thank you for watching.